We've looked at two communication methods already, parallel and serial transmission, and two separate methods, like a, a, the, the two pairs are separate. We've got now synchronous or asynchronous transmission. And synchronous as a term means occurring at the same time, if you think of synchronized swimmers or synchronized divers. All of their actions are occurring at the same time. So unsurprisingly, for this communication, this is where the sender and receiver are kept synchronized throughout. And this is done by them using a clock which is at the same rate. So they're essentially using the same clock signal or a replica of the same clock. And this is used as a reference point for the day's transmission. And this means transmission occurs at regular intervals. To show this visually then, if we have two devices, the sender and the receiver, they both have access to the same clock or, as I say, same re a replica of the same clock. A clock is just a device that produces a repeated signal so it fluctuates between two different values, two different voltage levels and it can be used in this way to regulate transmission because it occurs at regular intervals. So every 10 milliseconds it fluctuates between being high to low. So in this example, let's say that they've both agreed that when the clock is high this device is going to send data to this device. It could be when the clock is on an edge, it could be when it's at uh, low, it doesn't really matter. But we've agreed here that this device is going to send data when the clock is high like it is now, at the beginning it's high. Uh, so we send data and then once the clock is low again, once it fluctuates, it's going to stop sending data, it doesn't send data when the clock is low. This allows the device to be ready to receive it and it just regulates the whole transfer essentially. And it's very unlikely that this is going to be enough time to send all the data that's needed. So it will just sort of fluctuate between sending data and then waiting for the clock to return to its other position. Asynchronous, on the other hand, does not use a common timing signal, a common clock. Asynchronous meaning not synchronous. So here the devices aren't kept synced, they're not permanently synced up. They only are synced up during transmission. And this is done using a start bit at the beginning of the message and ending it with a stop bit. So two devices again and it's sending data whenever it wants to but it adds a start bit to the end to, to the front even and adds a stop bit to the end. And usually one is for the start bit and usually zero is for the stop bit but it doesn't really matter either way. The actual message has to be a set length so they have to have agreed that a byte is going to get sent so it can count the bits, it knows it's going to get 10 bits in total because it's got the stop bit and the start bit as well. So I glossed over it but this bit here is important, the fact they are synced up during transmission. You know when no data is being sent they're not synced up at all, they've both got separate clocks but they do need to be synced up during transmission because this, di this device is sending data at a set rate, it's going okay it's going to be 1, 0, 1, 0, so at a set rate and this rate might not match up with this computer. Once the start bit arrives it can essentially time the difference between the start bit and the first actual bit of the message and use that time to sync up its own clock so that it's, it's operating at the same rate as the sending device. And otherwise it might miss bits, it might miscount how many bits are in the message. So it's really important they are synced up if only during the transmission itself. And as I say, the size of the body of the data must also be pre-agreed. It needs to know there's going to be a byte. Otherwise it won't be able to interpret whether this final bit is part of a message still or is in fact a stop bit. And what's also important is a gap will be left between the stop bit and any next message. Likely there's going to be a second message and it will leave a gap in between so that it doesn't seem like it's just another message straight on. It needs to have a slight gap. Comparing the two then, so synchronous is usually faster than asynchronous because asynchronous has the extra bits which don't seem like too much of a big deal but when you're dealing with very small messages often a message is just a byte you know it's a fairly high percentage of the actual overall message you know, it's a fifth of a message you're spending on just for stop and start bits and also the gap needed let's go back in the gap needed after the stop bit uh, counts as slowing it down so synchronous is usually faster also synchronous does need a common clock signal or some way of sharing it and within a single device where a clock signal is going to all the components that's quite simple but with two separate devices, getting a common clock signal is not very easy to do. So that's why asynchronous might be better in that case. You don't have to share the clock. It's cheaper and easier to implement. For synchronous, you may also have to wait briefly until data can be sent. You're waiting for the clock to go back to its position, which you're allowed to send data at. And that's going to be a very small amount of time. If it's a long, if you're sending multiple messages over multiple clock cycles, that delay may build up, but it is still faster overall despite having to potentially wait a little bit before sending it. You can't send it when you want, whereas asynchronous can transmit whenever you're ready. You don't have to wait for the other device to be ready, you just send it whenever you want to. So synchronous and asynchronous as terms are separate to serial or parallel, but to try and link them together, almost all parallel transmission is actually synchronous. 
we talked about how the bits have to arrive simultaneously and synchronous really lends it to this it's really keeping them on the same page uh, also because parallel transmission has to be done over very small distances it's possible to have a common clock signal so if it's done within a computer like we talked about then the CPU and the memory are going to have access to the same clock signal we don't have that technical constraint um, when devices are kept separate asynchronous is definitely more prevalent just worldwide we don't have the same clock signal we can all tap into but within a single system where there may be synchronous communication going on it might be used when data is sent sporadically so a mouse or a keyboard the input from a mouse or a keyboard isn't regular it's sporadic we don't know when someone's going to press a key on a keyboard so it may as well be asynchronous you don't want to keep them linked up when we don't need it necessarily